Tune In Tuesday is our monthly webinar series where we bring in fitness experts, such as our own host today, Ashley, to talk about topics that they are an expert in. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ashley Hodge, who is hosting this week's webinar on Beat the Sweets. And if you have any questions during the webinar about anything she talks about, just go ahead and type it in the chat box to the right of your screen. And at the end of the presentation, she will do a Q&A session. All right, Ashley, I'm going to give it to you. Thanks, Alexa. Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Ashley Hodge. Um, so who am I? I'm a personal fitness trainer, yoga instructor, and nutrition coach. Um, I provide sustainable coaching and fitness and nutrition for long-term better results. Um, as a personal testimony, I've actually lost my own 60 pounds over 10 years ago, and I managed to keep it off. Because trust me, I've had my sugar highs. Because looking back when I was overweight, eating a full roll of Oreos was awesome and invigorating, but it wasn't enough to crave my, my cravings. I wanted more, and of course the scale went up. So sugar can be just as addicting, and our bodies adapt to knowing that we will feed us sugar and create this ongoing cycle that can seem like it's never ending unless we address it. So how can someone begin to even acknowledge and decrease his or her use of sugar? But that's what we're going to discuss today. Now as a personal trainer and someone who has been on the other side of losing weight and wanting to become healthy, it takes consistency and honestly just hauling out all your sugar-laden foods in your house being honest with yourself, becoming an avid nutrition label reader. I personally use apps like MyFitnessPal. This helps to keep me accountable and that way I can keep in the know with what I'm putting into my body. Is it easy to make this transition? Definitely not. I believe that kicking out sugar or at least reducing your sugar intake for the next 30 days or so is most helpful. Um, and if at best, just try to do some healthy sugar replacements, um, which we'll talk about later in the slides. Um, but the first step is to be aware. So here's today's agenda. Um, so we're gonna briefly cover what is sugar, the six rules of good nutrition, monitoring our blood sugar, balanced daily food choices with healthy variety and breaking self-defeating habits. Um, so we're gonna first gonna talk about what is sugar. The surprising truth about sugar is that sometimes we get worried about if we're eating too much of it, are we wondering how much, is, how much of, of it is it safe to eat, um, whether it's a bad for you, no matter what. It's time we took a clear-headed look at this topic, and it's time for you to hear the truth about sugar. Because is it good? Is it bad? Honestly, it's really hard to say for sure these days. But what is interesting is that sugar is a fundamental molecule in biology. Human bodies need sugar. Most of us think of sugar as just the white stuff we put in our coffee, or maybe what makes up 9% of those colored marshmallow cereals. However, sugar is actually a group of molecules that share a similar structure. So we might actually call them sugars, plural. This group includes a lot of members such as glucose, fructose, sucrose, maltose, galactose, lactose, it goes on. Sugars naturally occur in biology and in most food, even if just in trace amounts. For example, here's what the breakdown of sugar looks like in a banana. So now I'm sure you'll look at a banana a bit more differently. But keep in mind, there is of course much more sugar in processed and refined foods than in less processed and unrefined foods. Sugar makes up the backbone of our DNA and helps to power our cells. It helps to store energy for later. It helps plants to convert sunlight into sugar. We convert that sugar into fuel. Molecules like the glucose and the fructose are just so basic to our biological needs, even bacteria love them. So again, is sugar bad, is sugar good? But somewhere along the way, sugar became the bad guy. So why did we start hating on sugar? When do we start wanting to purge it from our bodies? Why do some of us fear it so much? At this point, do we just need a little relationship counseling or is it a toxic relationship? Is it time to part ways? The truth is this is a difficult conversation to have because almost all of us are emotionally invested in our position about sugar. So we're, we'll explore just some key questions and ideas about sugar. And just to share with you what I've learned, there's no one size that doesn't fit all. It, you know, there's not an all or nothing approach to it. You know, health and wellness habits, you know, is doable, but again, we have to be aware of our intake. Now, the number one myth about sugar, fruit has too much sugar. I'm sure plenty of you guys have heard that. It is true that fruit has naturally occurring sugars, but it has so much full of, it's so much full of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. So I really wouldn't chalk up to say that sugar is necessarily bad. 
So we'll discuss the six rules of good nutrition just to kind of give you an idea of just what does what does good nutrition look like? And what exactly do you have to do to succeed? And importantly, what do you have to avoid or maybe have less of? Now, before we dive into this, I just want you to take a moment, think about it. If you want to improve the way your body looks, the way it feels, and the way it performs, and if you want to do all these three things simultaneously, what guidelines should you follow? Come up with that list in your mind right now. Write it down if you can. Now, take a look over that list and think for a moment before we jump into the rules. Because sometimes these rules that we think of were taught to us by our parents, maybe by our family or friends. Some food choices are shaped by emotional associations, whether it's real or perceived. These are also called our so-called comfort foods. Of course, no one is immune to media influences. I'm sure you see a left and right. Somehow with Instagram algorithm, it just pops up when we're just thinking about something. Nutrition is the talk of the town. And no doubt your nutrition rules have probably been influenced by your own past attempts, whether successful or unsuccessful. So let's take a look at what really works. Let's change up the rules. Not sure if you have done this before, if you realize eating every two to three hours, do you do this? If not, maybe you should take a look into doing this and spray, spraying out your meals throughout the day. You don't necessarily have to have five to eight meals per day. It honestly, it really depends on your own schedule. But just take a look at and notice, when was the last time you ate? That might have to do with your cravings. Another tip, eat a complete lean protein each time you eat. Are you eating something that was that was an animal or has came from an animal, even if you are a vegetarian, this rule still applies. You still need a complete protein and at least need to find non-animal sources. Now, how much protein do individuals really need to optimize their performance and body composition? Well, to be honest, the truth is no one really knows exactly. And why? Because everyone is individual and is different. However, what I do know, 85% of my clientele that I've consulted with have been eating less protein than I've recommended. And the first thing I do to stimulate results, and usually results means body composition changes, is to increase your protein intake while making just a few consistent commitments to your carb and your fat intake. Tip three, eat vegetables every time you eat. Make it your goal every time you have a plate, just add some vegetables in there. Don't skip the veggies. As always, just dish the calorie containing drinks, including those fruit juices. If, again, take a look at and read the nutrition label. They have a lot of hidden sugars that you might not be aware of. Next tip, focus on whole foods. Most of your dietary intake should come from whole foods and not from processed foods. Have those 10% foods. Now I know some of the tips I did mention above probably made you cringe, but here's the thing. 100% nutritional discipline is never required for optimal progress. It's, there is no all or nothing approach. The difference in results between 90% adherence to your nutrition program and 100% Adherence is negligible. So you can allow yourself 10% foods. That's fine. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about monitoring our blood sugar. And that's just more so to do with what I mentioned before of eating every two to three hours. Just something that you might want to just take a look at um, when you're noticing you're having certain sugar cravings. And we're going to take a look at balanced daily food choices with a healthy variety. Now, let's face it. I know we're busy during the week, so we're not going to want to be spending a lot of time living up gourmet meals. I would ask that just maybe once or twice during the week, maybe you just think of a few meals that you really like and you would be interested to prepare. Now, I want to kind of provide you with a meal template as you're thinking of those meals. So you want to eat at least five portions of a variety of fruit and vegetables every day. Do your best to eat completely protein each time you eat. Base your meals off of high fiber starchy foods like potatoes, sweet potatoes, bread, rice, pasta. And again, don't be afraid of carbs. You can add carbs, but again, it's going to be very individual. And as always, just learn to love healthy fats. And lastly, for each meal, make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, um, at least six to eight glasses per day. I always say I suggest five meals per day as a standard, but again, it's going to vary upon person to person. So let's talk about some breaking our self-defeating habits because there's things that we could do on our end as well to beat the sweets. Now, I'm not sure how many hours of sleep you're getting, but you might want to take a, a notice to see how many hours of sleep that you're getting. Bad sleep habits can promote food cravings. So that's something you want to keep in mind. 
Now, I was mentioning earlier before as far as replacing some of your quote unquote bad habits with a better alternative. Like what you could do, for example, you can maybe cook with applesauce, you know, just using a different and healthier ingredients to still have like what you want, um, but you don't necessarily have to remove it from your eating schedule. Um, you don't have to go cold turkey. Another good example is if you uh, fry chicken and if you have an air fryer, put your chicken in the air fryer. Uh, another great tip would be that we can do on our end to control is to decrease our stress. Slow down, be more mindful. Notice as you're chewing your food, really taste the food. No need to rush. Lastly, be happy. Phil's many, many think that it's just a lack of willpower, but honestly, if we take a look at it, eating sweets provides us with a sort of natural high. It fires beta endorphins in our brain that can instantly lift one's mood and settle anxiety, giving a false sense of well-being. So let's keep that in mind. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how can I even find a way to track how much food I'm eating? One of the apps that I mentioned before was MyFitnessPal. So this is a great online app that you can use. And now if you're not tech savvy, that's okay. You can also use hand portioning. So I provided here just an example of how you can hand portion your food using your hand. It's free. It's convenient, it's always with you. Now I do wanna sum as a big question I'm sure you're wondering, well, how much sugar is okay to eat? But let's get real here. Sugar is not a health food. It doesn't nourish us. It doesn't add a lot of nutrient value. It doesn't give us any vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, antioxidants, fiber, or water. Eating a lot of sugar doesn't make our bodies better, stronger, healthier, or more functional. And sugar doesn't add value, certainly not when compared to other foods or macronutrients like protein or omega-3 fatty acids, but biology is pretty complex. Diseases are complex too. We can't blame one chemical for all the health problems we have. Good health is neither created nor destroyed by a single food. Again, human beings are very diverse. We vary widely in all kinds of ways, including how much carbs we need to thrive or perform well, how well we digest absorb and use sugars as well as how effectively and safely we store or dispose of the excess. How sugar affects our appetite varies, hunger, fullness, ability to stop eating it, how we feel about it, behave around sugar, how sugar spins our brain dials and gives us a sense of reward. So we really can't say that X on a sugar is always the best for everyone all the time or that people should never eat sugar. It just doesn't work that way. Some people might choose to cut out sugar completely some people might try to micromanage their intake down to the gram. Some people can just roll with a general eat less processed food guideline and we'll be just fine. Some people do know that a low sugar, low carb, even ketogenic diet works for them while others thrive on high carb diets. That being said, just being aware of your, car your sugar intake is probably a good idea. Now my favorite quote by Edward W. Smith the will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. If we are going to win the battle against cravings, we must prepare and plan to fight a good fight. So my first step and tip to you is to be aware and second tip is to have a plan. Now again, if anyone has any questions, please type them into the chat box on your screen. So we have a question from Onika T. Thank you so much for the question. Do you believe that sugar consumption, no matter how much once consumed in a caloric deficit can lead to weight loss still? So with, as far as caloric deficit and caloric expenditure, it honestly is going to depend. Um, so I don't know you on a one-on-one, -on -one, but my first tip suggestion to you, it would be to track everything that you're eating. Track just as normal as you're eating and just kind of notice, is your weight maintaining? Are you gaining? Are you losing? And then I will focus on there. Uh, because there's just so much that goes into a caloric deficit. Um, but there's been a lot of documentaries where people have McDonald's every day for 30 days and they're still able to lose weight. Now, is that the best quality? Probably not. But you can be in a caloric deficit. But you also want to keep in mind, do you, are you satiated as well? You know, eating your sugar meals. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So we have a question from Saul Ramos Jr. Is fasting for 16 hours healthier than eating every two to three hours? So again, and this will be the common health personal trainer response, it depends. Um, because I know for me, 
I'm hungry. Like I wake up hungry. I go to bed hungry. I, I love I love eating. I love food. My body just wakes up and I want to eat. So if you're able to safely fast for that long and you feel as though you are able to perform in like whatever sport, weightlifting or whatever your exercise um, needs are and it feels good to you, then I would continue to do so. But if you notice that you feel tired, um, your energy is pretty low, you may want to take a look at shifting your eating patterns. I think that's all the questions we've got. So thank you again, Ashley, for a great webinar. We'll be um, publishing this webinar on our YouTube. And for those of you that are FitSpot um, members, you will be able to watch this on demand through your FitSpot account. And we'll have that up either this evening or tomorrow. So thank you all again and have a great rest of your day.